Imagine you're riding out to your very own flooded cornfield. It's duck season and the birds are flying. Lots of birds are flying, wanting to land and feed in your field. I hit him. And you're not even close to reaching your bag limit. A cornfield is more of a feeding hole, and the ducks are usually dive bombing in on it because they know there's food there, and it's just a different style of hunting. Maybe it's just a dream after all. Not if you're waterfowl biologist Tim White and some of his close friends. There are uh, logs and stuff in here. So. They'll hunt that cornfield, but they really prefer their duck blinds. There are a lot of different types of habitats in West Tennessee. A lot of people hunt flooded fields, cornfields, uh, but we really enjoy hunting, hunting these, these swamps. Um, it's just a little different. Check out the turkey in the tree out in front of us. Look at those. Look at that turkey. It's cold and rainy as dawn breaks on this morning. Oh, there's, they're all in the trees out through there. A perfect day for shooting birds. Kill him, kill him. Joining Tim today are his hunting buddies, Matt Abernathy and Justin Miller, along with Whisper, <laughs> Justin's hard working yellow lab. We're facing west, and the south fork of the forker deer is on our right, running parallel to us. <laughs> This duck hole is just one of several these friends hunt. We have eight blinds, and uh, everybody kind of has their own spot, uh, divided amongst, uh, I guess, 10 or 12 people. And, and we all share and hunt together, but uh, most, most guys have their own spot they're kind of responsible for. <laughs> We usually like to get the ducks to land on the water. We give the first few groups a chance to, to get down, light them on the water, and hopefully a few more will follow them in. You know, later in the day, if you see they're not acting right or like you want them, prefer them to, then you may have to shoot them when they swing by. Kill it. Kill it. Oh, it's about time to eat. That right there, for that's money right there. Tim also happens to be a very good cook. In between calls and shots, he's cooking up some delicious sweet rolls along with mouth-watering egg and sausage biscuits. Meals are just as much a tradition in his blind as hunting. Here you go, Mr. Chris. I'm absolutely amazed with the sheer number of ducks that I've seen in this West Tennessee bottom. It's unbelievable, we've seen thousands of ducks this morning. Hadn't killed a lot of them, but we've really had a great time working them in. Look at that big bunch right there. Yeah. Lord, that's a nice bunch. Come on down here, baby. They've taught me a lot about duck hunting. Tim, being a waterfowl biologist, I've learned a lot about ducks. And um, oh my gosh, there are about uh, 30 right behind us here, seriously. I almost have to call these ducks. Whisper, do you have something to say for him? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, really? Justin like is Tim's play? nephew and Whisper's owner. Whisper's probably fetched over, well, right at 3,000 ducks, I'd guess. I hadn't kept up with it exactly, but there were her first four or five years, there were, there were years where she fetched over 600, 700 ducks a year. <laughs> It's a family thing. You know, it's, we're, I'm the fourth generation of duck hunter, I believe, and he's the fifth generation of duck hunter. And we both have children now, so I expect they'll be duck hunters, at least I hope they will. Their duck hunting tradition is built not only on family ties, but shared experiences. Two strong bonds that ensure a future filled with the stories that will be told time and again. It's not all about the, the duck killing. You know, if, if it was all about that, I'd, I'd have quit a long time ago. But, you know, coming down here and spending time with family and friends, I got a good cook here with Tim, so at least I get to eat, eat well and gain about 10 pounds through the winter. <laughs> Ball right there in front of us. Whether it's a duck blind in a swamp or a flooded cornfield, duck hunters know how exciting it is when the birds fly and their dog is working overtime. Ha <laughs> ha! 
It might be a dream. I say it's a little bit of heaven. I'm Chris Nishan on Tennessee's Wild Side.